Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY video with top Australian IT executives. On my left, I have Gary Denman. He is the Senior Director of, of, of uh, Brocade for Australia and New Zealand. And on my right is Phil Coates. He's Systems Engineer Manager for Brocade, also at Australia and New Zealand. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Hello. Nice to be here. So, although Brocade is probably likely well known by viewers and readers, could you please just give us the sort of the quick story of what Brocade does and the products and services offers to the market? Certainly. Um, Brocade's responsibility is to assist customers with the uh, responsibility of delivering data from a storage environment through a network to an end user uh, through an application user interface. And do, anything you wanted to add about uh, Brocade's um, skills and abilities? Well, look, that, Brocade's business is providing network connectivity for um, storage area networking as well as Ethernet products, so yep. Ethernet networks. Um, it's an interesting fact that Brocade is the number two spend in the data center. Well, there you go. So well, we'll get onto more of that a little bit later on. Today, though, you've announced that you're redefining network for IP storage systems with the industry's first purpose-built storage connectivity portfolio for the data center and dis disaster recovery applications. Now, we hear about data centers, we hear about hybrid clouds, we hear about disaster recovery, we hear about all these things from all the different vendors. Everyone says theirs is the best. What makes yours the best? And what are the new things that you're announcing beyond that today? Well, well, I think as part of that. I think the thing to uh, to just focus on first is is what is happening in the market. Yeah, and, okay. and certainly the um, this concept of a third platform is is being discussed, and IDC talk about this quite commonly. And it's this explosion of data, uh, BYODs, and consumerized devices, yeah, micro applications, big data, and with that comes a whole range of opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, for customers, but at the same time comes a whole dis discussion around architecture and how to deliver those services effectively, um, in a cost-effective manner, at the performance that is expected, and meet the SLAs of both the internal business and the external customers. Along with that, uh, storage has been one of these areas where more and more data is being stored on a daily basis and the exponential growth is, is anticipated to continue. So. At the same time, uh, um, the storage team are challenged with delivery of that data at the level of performance that is, is required yeah. and expected. Which is non-stop, 100% availability, can't, no downtime. Faster, no. faster, faster. That's it, yeah. And all those things are happening. And they're doing that over a network that they don't necessarily control and have a mandate. That's over. it, you're going to the public networks then. And so therefore what they're looking to develop and what we have developed for, for, for the market is a dedicated network for that storage environment to deliver performance, scalability, manageability and cost effectiveness for delivering these services. And also ever faster, almost instantaneous disaster recovery, right? And disaster recovery is some of the technical aspects that we would sort of call out and uh, back up, etc. Uh, that, that we can talk about. Yes, I mean, it, yeah, um, I suppose adding to that with the explosion of growth that we're seeing in, in storage mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing, I suppose, more of that being delivered on IP NAS as we are on Fibre Channel as well. Um, part of the announcement today is based around the use of Ethernet Fabrics and Ethernet Fabrics is that 21st century type networking component which is not a legacy 20 year old type architecture and the benefits that that new technology brings is availability, connectivity, uh, and, and resilience and SLAs based around that storage area network. What we do see is when customers put storage area or NAS connectivity onto existing networks, that they sacrifice things like availability or, or, or functionality based around, um, you know, if the network fails, there, there are sometimes outages for that mm -hmm. storage area network. Ethernet fabrics is a way of alleviating that sort of situation. And, and sorry, uh, what I'd add is that this is this is a time really where customers are are looking at their data center architecture, they're looking at their application architecture, they're looking at their storage architecture, and with that, they're trying to maximise their investments, select the platform that is best suited to the service they're trying to deliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah but have a common way of interfacing into that, managing it, and uh, ensuring the delivery of the service. Uh, data centers today are growing. You wrote an uh, interesting article about Equinix's new data yep. center, and you know we're seeing that explosion happening all mm. the time. So with that, more and more organizations are reevaluating their architecture, and this is why it is a very optimal uh, discussion 
it with our customers today. Sure. Now, I was also having a look at the announcement and there's obviously also some hardware to go with this. So please tell me about the, the, the new devices. So this, this comes in three, I suppose there's three pillars that, that props this, um, this uh, proposition up. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got the Ethernet Fabrics, which provides that connectivity for your IP NAS to sit on top of, yep. provides differentiated service and SLA management, alleviates for any, any, any link failures, for example, is self-healing. Mm -hmm. They're managed as a single uh, logical switch, so I'm not managing each single entity. Um, there's a component around replication, so this is around mitigating of risk, because if I if I can't replicate my data in time, then I have an exposure to that data that hasn't been replicated. If we put in a dedicated uh, IP SAM with a dedicated replication network, then I'm reducing that risk because I could replicate that traffic in, in within the time that I'm expecting to do so. Mm -hmm. And as Gary just alluded to, um, from a storage area networking management point of view, to have a single pane of glass that manages either my fiber channel or my IP NAS, and is provided to the storage area networking team that provides the responsibility to the team that understands storage. And when we talk to customers, I think the, the, the point I'd really call out is, as Phil discussed, was that risk element, that more and more compliance and regulatory control is required around data, the, the, the importance of backing that up and making it available, and applications have got to be available 24 by seven now. Downtime is not something that is is well respected um, and therefore organizations need predictable platforms to ensure delivery of those services sure, on a sure. basis. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, the way it's all going, people you know, constantly upgrading because they want to get more from less. It's the, it's the usual it's the usual story. But also I was referring to the new switch and the IP extension okay. switch as well, which I thought you might just want to cover briefly. The uh, VDX6740 and the 7840 IP extension switch. So the 6740 switch is part of our Ethernet Fabrics um, yeah. solution. Um, it has uh, automatic configuration, so I can literally plug links in and they automatically configure and create a fabric, which is what we're sitting on top of. Uh, the 7840 is a product that is providing uh, replication services. So it does both fiber channel and IP uh, connectivity across a wide area link. Um, and is also storage optimized. And so what that means is that if you've got WAN links that are suffering packet loss, for example, which is fairly typical for WAN links, mm -hmm. we take care of that management of the link. And we've, shown, we've been shown to have up to a 50 times increase in the throughput available using a dedicated storage network and the 7840 for replication. I uh, always used to love reading Isaac Asimov's uh, science fiction books as a child and reading about the positronic brains and I think of these things as being like very primitive early parts of some futuristic you know they're very advanced today of course but I mean f from a robot in the future these are just elements that will be shrunken down to the size of a of a fingernail or something one day but you know I mean the other side of the coin is uh, the the Terminator but we don't want to go there <laughs> we don't want to go there so you're obviously considered as a market leader in fiber channel that makes today's announcement more interesting you probably have obviously sp spoken about ethernet fiber but you know, are people moving away from fibre channel technologies? Yeah, look, I think that's a common question that, that, that gets asked. And I think what we're, what we're finding is that people who are drawn to this technology uh, really fit into two categories. The first category is that they've got a well-established fibre channel business and they're using that inside their mission critical application platforms. That is not changing as a strategy. That yeah. continues to grow. The market continues to grow. It's, it's a solid business and, and there is no change to that. Then they also have other types of storage, typically IP storage, uh, NAS solutions for other line of business applications or, or functions. And they want some of that resilience, they want some of that manageability and that common experience that they've had on fiber channel to translate into their other storage requirements. That's one category. So no, it's not changing the fiber channel footprint at all. We then have a, a different set of customers who have really bought IP NAS solutions and they're looking for the manageability because they haven't had those types of capabilities uh, and performance in that dedicated network. Um, so, long answer to a short question, it is not changing anything from a fiber channel perspective. Really. Sure, and you already, you already mentioned various aspects of, of what the new technology does, but I mean, what are some of the other key concerns around storage that your customers have and, and managing this growth that they're experiencing? I think one of the biggest questions that they're grappling with today 
is you know we see the emergence of cloud technology and we see cloud storage we see solid state storage we yeah. see different grades of storage and performance and you know, they're really trying to take the view of you know what is the optimal solution for me as a customer based around my profile of uh, risk data integrity requirements and, and, and compliance requirements um, and also how am I going to manage that and then what are the commercial implications of the different models that are available to, to me and really that they're, they're looking at storage in a very uh, strategic way and making selections but ensuring that they have a way to be able to manage that in a consistent and coherent manner. Anything you wanted to add Phil? Oh, look, I was just going to say that, that our tests have shown that if we separate an IP, put in a dedicated IP NAS um, environment or put in a dedicated IP NAS network, uh, our tests have shown that we can get anywhere between an 18 and 20%. And of course, your mileage is going to vary depending on how your network is at the moment. Sure. But anywhere between, say, 18 and 20% improvement in your storage operation, uh, throughput, etc. Now it's very easy to translate that into real dollars into a, into a business, depending on what your business is doing. Mm -hmm. And so this is all about providing a better way of doing things um, with IP NAS and using 21st net, you know, century solutions as opposed to that archaic 20, old, 20 year old type you know, infrastructure. Sure, so I mean, that's clearly one of the examples of not just, of also the, you know, the cost, efficiency, cost efficiency, but the agility and flexibility of the commercial cloud technology models that are available. I mean, what else is Brocade you know, doing? What's its role? What else is, it, is its role in this process? Yeah, and, and I think that that's naturally a question that, that, that we get is organizations are saying, look, I've got all these choices and you know, what cloud provides me in, is that agility from a, from a commercial standpoint. I can buy by gigabyte, by hour, by all, all sorts of you know, different On-prem, branding. hybrid cloud, all, all those I things. I mean, every so permutation is now happening. And, and so what, how we've responded to that is we've responded to it in, in a very similar manner. So we, we provide a subscription service to hardware. So we, we, have a, we have a program called Brocade Network Subscription, which allows, which is available for this technology, which allows organizations to essentially subscribe to it just like they would a cloud service. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're, they're, they're locked in. So mm -hmm. if at a certain point, 60 days notice, they no longer require it, we will come in and we'll remove that. There's no cost buyout. It's not like a leasing program. Sure, no balloon payment. Yeah. No balloon payment at the end of it, because you know those are those are models that people are becoming effective with or, or familiar with yeah. through the cloud providers, and really it's time for the hardware providers to behave in a similar manner. Sure. What we've seen interestingly is that people don't return; they actually upgrade their technologies, they put more technology on, um, and that really is, a, is is evidence to us that that the technology works and delivers as customers would anticipate. So I think what we're seeing in our hardware business is we're taking those software type models into a hardware world. And then our software business, because we're driving customers more to the concept of using software and automation to deliver networks, and this is more campus-grade networks mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, functions, the, the virtual uh, virtualized network functions as a piece of software as opposed to a piece of hardware, then those are, again, commercial models which are paid as subscription services, mm -hmm. very typical with other cloud providers. Sure, any comments from you, Phil? No, I think that's succinct. Covers it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I did, you alluded to before about the article I wrote about Equinix yeah. launching its uh, fourth data center in Sydney, its fifth in Australia. So naturally, you'd be one of the technologies that um, you'd be seeing in data centers around the world and presumably yeah. Equinix's as well. Yeah, look, I think we have found a very interesting space for our technology, which is very much embedded in the data center, uh, whether that's at an Equinix or other data center uh, providers. Uh, the organizations who, who keep their equipment there very commonly see our technology embedded in there. As, as, uh, uh, as indicated earlier by Phil, you know, the second largest spend inside a data center. Yeah, that, that, that's a, from a network perspective, that's a, that's a really crucial role for us. And customers are enjoying that. They're certainly looking at how they can take advantage of it. The ability to have a fabric across their, uh, their, their data center is certainly uh, uh, something they're taking advantage of. Yeah. And often you have companies, you know, they, they don't make announcements, they make pre-announcements. We're pre-announcing that something's available in a few months. Is all your stuff available today or is it sometime Absolutely. down the track? Absolutely. All this, everything we've announced today is available today and we've been talking to customers and actually there are customers in Australia who are running this technology and taking advantage of those capabilities today. Yeah, well that's good because it always annoys me when customers co companies say, "Yeah, it's coming," and it's like, "It's coming! <laughs> I want it now." So, look, I always like to to change a little bit of tack 
and just ask a question that was inspired by Ashton Kutcher, who visited Australia on behalf of Lenovo a few months ago. And he always liked to ask uh, people to share the best piece of advice that uh, helped them to where they got today. So uh, I thought I'd start with, well, start with you, Phil. Yeah, go for it. Oh, look, my dad always told me not to rest on my laurels. And uh, I, I dare say that's the reason I love working for Brocade, because Brocade is a real innovator of technology and solutions. And uh, I think it's a very exciting ride to be up on, and uh, I think that's great advice from Dad. Clearly no time for resting your life in your brocade. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary? Oh, I, I go back to, you know, as, as, as trying to run the team and lead the team, it's about the culture and the customer intimacy that we try and create. And I think uh, I received some feedback from, or, or some guidance from one of my previous managing directors, which was, you know, if you say you care, care. Yeah. And, uh, you know, go out there and be in front of the customer results are not the focus point the results are what is what you receive from the activity you drive and uh, and that's really where, where, where we've seen success sure. understanding the customer need really trying to understand uh, where we fit into that puzzle and and making sure that we deliver on our expect on their expectations of us sure and I'm, I'm sure the customer base is, is very wide but who would be some of the big names globally and in australia that you're able to share that um a brocade customers. Yeah, uh, um, obviously there are public uh, announcements and, and the types of organisations that we talk about on a regular basis would be the likes of Megaport uh, and, and Focus and those sorts of organisations. Yeah, well, all big names. So just coming towards the end of the interview, I always like to look in the crystal ball and ask you both what you th how you think the industry will have evolved over the next five or ten years' time. I don't think we'll be quite at robots and terminators yet, but certainly much more advanced versions of the data centres we have today. Sorry, do you mean that at a data center level, or do you mean well, it in general? Well, in, in terms of you know the technologies that Brocade is bringing to the marketplace, how do you think that will have? Yeah. A, a, you know, I don't obviously want you to give me you know secrets to the plans no. that are coming next next uh, in the next year or so, but um, just the general look at how you think the industry that that you're serving will evolve over the next five to ten. Uh, years. I think our strategy and very much where we're leading to is we see this abstraction of the hardware and the software components and we're going to be hardware accelerated with software control. Yeah. And I think what we're certainly seeing with all our discussions is automation is key, getting predictable outcomes through the automation and integration of services. And uh, that's certainly a very large push for us. And we do that around open standards and a point of differenti differentiation is that open source component inside our software as well. Uh, we'll continue to see that driven through. But our role is to bring all the uh, applications and hardware together and, and drive that automation. We'll see more of that coming very shortly. And Phil, any, any thoughts on the future oh, look, from you? Along the same lines as far as I'm concerned, we haven't seen, um, we, we've seen abstraction based around applications and we've seen storage abstraction. The network really is, is the last bastion of a way of, we need to separate that uh, hardware, as Gary said, from the software component which gives us more flexibility in deployment of those solutions, and I dare say is going to achieve all sorts of things that nece haven't necessarily been thought of just yet. It means that we've got the flexibility to deploy things on the fly, we can create workloads automatically, and again, as Gary mentioned, uh, the openness is a really important thing. So, do you have any final messages for ITY viewers and readers and for your current and future customers? I think the, the, the thing I'd, I'd reiterate is that storage and networks are critical to the functioning of applications and user experiences and that is only going to grow. The demand for data and the demand for uh, getting access to that over all sorts of different devices at, at a very rapid pace is only increasing and storage and networks are critical probably even more critical today than they have been historically mm. in the delivery of those services. It isn't something you see every day. Um, we encourage people to come and talk to us. Uh, we, we certainly are moving very rapidly towards uh, new innovations and new changes. And uh, uh, I think uh, you know, our role is to ensure that people have got accessibility to that. And uh, Phil? Oh, look, I, I'm one, of, one of Brocade's catchphrases is the data center is everywhere. So. As these applications get deployed, for example, into mobile phones or out to uh, edges, you know, mobile mobile phone towers, for example, the ability for us to provide networking services in a virtual container means that there are brand new revenue streams that, that, that carriers, service providers, data centers haven't even thought about yet. And we see that as a massive opportunity. Well, Phil, Gary, thank you very much. Thank you.